Welcome, platform everyone. Um, my name is Kevin Pons. I am director of site reliability engineering at AutoZone. Um, I have my platform ops team with me today uh, to tell you about our road to cloud native. Um, just to introduce the team real quick, um, we have Sri Timuraju here. He's a systems engineer, platform ops, and customer satisfaction. Abhishek uh systems engineer, platform ops, and customer satisfaction. Alex Wang. Um, Systems Engineer, Platform Ops, and Customer Satisfaction, and Daniel Church, Product Manager, Platform Ops, and Customer Satisfaction. Um, here we have a safe harbor statement. I'm sure you have all read something like this before. Um, I'm not going to go through it in detail, but uh, we are going to talk about um, some things today that, are, that may be forward-looking or speculative in nature. Um, so if you're not familiar with AutoZone, um, 85% of the country is, is within distance of an auto zone. We are the largest and fastest growing auto, aftermarket automotive parts retailer in the country. We have over 6,000 stores, most of them in the United States with about 10% of them in Mexico and Brazil. Um, our headquarters is in Memphis, Tennessee, but we don't actually call it a headquarters. We call it a store support center uh, because everything that we do um, is to support our stores. Uh, we're a 40 year old company. Um, we started out of a grocery chain in Arkansas and um, have spun off into a dedicated uh, auto parts retailer um, today. Um, going back to the team, one thing that you might have noticed here um, is that everyone's job title includes customer satisfaction. That is not just within our team, that is within everyone at AutoZone. Um, AutoZone uh, is fanatical about customer satisfaction. Um, we have a concept called wow customer service um, and we strive to deliver wow customer service every day. Um, so, uh, one thing, we don't have, it at AutoZone, we don't have a mission statement. We have a pledge in values. Um, we have values that we live by every day. Now, this might come across initially as, as somewhat of a platitude, but it is something that we take very seriously every single day. Um, one thing that a lot of people find interesting is that we have a company cheer that we do whenever we do any sort of large meeting or presentation. So we're gonna give you guys the opportunity to see that cheer today, and if you would like to participate, please feel free. There is no pressure, um, but I would, I would love to see some people participate. So um, Abby and Shree are gonna come on stage with me, and we're gonna get started. All right. Give me an A, U, T, O, Z, O, N, E. Who's the best? AutoZone. Who is number one? The customer. AutoZoners Auto always put customers, customers first. first. We, know we know our parts, parts and products. products. Our, our stores, stores look great. great. We've, We've got, got the, the best merchandise at the right, right price. price. Now this is something that is quite fun, but it's also something that we take very seriously. Daniel is going to have a little bit more details about our values later on. Um, but uh, it, for us in corporate, we, we interpret this um, we, we, we put our internal customers first, primarily, our development community. That's something that um, is a hallmark of this team. Um, we know our tech stack very well. Um, we keep it clean, keep it well-maintained, um, and always ensure that we are working effectively and efficiently. Um, so I'm going to go back into a little bit of history um, in early 2017. Now, um, to sort of set the stage, the DIY auto parts business is uh, quite mature um, and very stable. However, the commercial business is um, a segment where we see our uh, growth opportunities. Um, that is the case of selling parts to independent garages, many of which are mom and pop shops across the country. Um, so strategically, we have been focusing on growing that business. And in late 2017, we started a campaign to examine that business from the ground up, refactor the business processes, and essentially bring, usher in a new generation of customer experience. Um, underpinning that are several, several application changes, and then underpinning that, um, of course, is infrastructure as well. At the time, I was the systems engineering manager for the Linux and Unix system teams, and I was sort of under the sort of Damocles uh, in relation to building servers on a very quick basis for all of these projects. And I specifically remember initially asking, well, how many servers do you need and when do you need them? Um, and the answer that I got back was uh, between 20 and 200 and in about two weeks. And that's not really the way that we worked at that time. Um, you know, we were very old, I'm an old school sysadmin, that's just how I am. 
and uh, we would build servers on a per project basis, have guys go in and configure them. Um, we typically didn't keep a lot of overhead in reserve. Um, so uh, generally, server delivery for a project was on a four to six week basis. Um, there was a little bit of, well, there was a lot of error involved. Um, a lot of uh, teams would come back to us when they didn't get their servers right. And um, it ended up, it, it was a poor experience for the development community, the project managers, and for even for me and my engineers as well. Um, so with light of how we were working and how we, what the demands placed upon us by the commercial acceleration program, it was clear that something needed to change. Um, so I and my leadership team sat down and we decided what are we going to do um, to be able to meet this demand. Um, so we, uh, we, 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 final, we, we decided to uh, implement a PaaS platform. Um, after uh, investigation and some POCs, we chose Pivotal Platform. Um, uh, and we, we thought that the decoupling of infrastructure from application delivery was what we needed to move forward. Um, I was a little bit of a skeptic initially. Uh, I'm a natural cynic myself. Um, I remember uh, I remember having a meeting with Pivotal initially where Pivotal recommended building a dedicated team um, uh, ongoing to consistently improve the platform. I remember them saying something called product management, which I didn't know what the heck that was. And uh, I'm used to us just building something and throwing it over the wall and saying it's done. Um, that's how we've worked in the past. <laughs> and uh, I didn't think this was gonna fly at AutoZone, to be honest with you. Um, but at some point I just ha I had to make some sort of Kirky Guardian leap and just accept that I'm gonna try this. It's either gonna work or it's not. Um, so that's exactly what we did. Um, and now today, 18 months later, we have a dedicated team and we are essentially the vanguard for how infrastructure teams want to operate at AutoZone. Um, so you saw the photo of me earlier. Um, these are the, this is the before and after photo after my New Year's resolution. So I'm much happier now, uh, much more stress-free, and my customers are as well. Um, so Alex Wang, systems engineer, platform ops, and customer satisfaction is going to go over some of our growing pains on the journey as it was not a um, completely linear path from where we were to where we are now. Thank you. Thank you, Kevin. So deploying Pivotal Platform with it wasn't without its growing pains. As Kevin mentioned, we had to provision infrastructure and had to go through the traditional way of submitting change tickets, having to wait lead times. And when we initially deployed Pivotal Platform, we had to set up the initial infrastructure. And that took, you know, we needed a load balancer, submit a request, wait a week, and hopefully it gets implemented correctly. And so to ensure that process went more smoothly, we had to build bridges and enhance our relationship with infrastructure teams so that we could get those requests expedited and also ensure that the request gets implemented correctly. And moving on to another one of our growing pains is how to secure the platform. And by that is, how does security work on the platform? Initially, when we first started the dojo, the process of deploying Pivotal Platform at AutoZone, the security team wasn't heavily involved. It was just a platform ops team. So we decided that, and they had security concerns of like, what is this product? Everything in production is supposed to run, it, run on it and we're not familiar with it. And so what we did to ease those security concerns is we decided to add as an external team member of ours, one of their teammates and had them go through the Cloud Dojo process with us. And by doing so, they had greater visibility into how Pivotal Platform works, the different architecture and concepts, and how security in the platform works. And that helped us enhance the relationship with that team. And anytime we had any firewall requests, we were able to get those expedited with, with uh, less resistance. And so our last gr uh, growing point was what can and should run. So when we initially deployed Pivotal Platform, a lot of developers wanted to run all their applications on our platform. In addition, the platform offered a lot of different features, uh, different tools that enabled developers. But we weren't able to take every application on the platform. So we had to consult with enterprise architecture to ver 
to see like which applications are compatible with the platform. And also, developers wanted to use all the features of the platform. So like the Go Build Pack, Redis, MySQL, Spring Cloud Services. Well, we couldn't just say yes to everything without first consulting with enterprise architecture and make sure that these adhere to the standards that they set. And we wanted to, we played as the mediator between the two teams. Uh, we, at the end of the day, we want to enable developers and by, we allowed them to do so by allowing them to select the tool of their choosing. So that was growing pains from the platform um, team's perspective. But how was the developer experience using this new platform? Well, it had a st steep learning curve. Uh, developers had to be familiar with the cloud native app architecture. That means understanding what the 12, after, 12 factor app looks like. And so some of the major factors of the 12 are your applications, microservices so it needs to be stateless. You can't statically bind your ports, let the platform pick one for you, streaming your logs to standard out and standard error, and your app has to start up within a reasonable amount of time, I think the default's a minute, and be able to shut down gracefully. Our developers also have to be familiar with the CFCLI, which um, most of you I'm sure are aware of, the CF push. It's the Cloud Foundry command line interface. And that's mostly for pushing their applications, creating services, any configuration changes. They have to be aware of how to manage their services. So if they want to connect their application to an external Oracle database, how would you go about doing that? Well, Pivotal has a concept called user provided services. So they would create one of those, put in their credentials, URL, and connect to their database that way. They have to be familiar with services offered on the platform. So if you, have, if you want to use Redis, how do you go about talking to the service broker and creating an instance and then obtaining the credentials so that you can connect your app to that service instance. And lastly, being comfortable with manifest at YAML. So in our lower non-prod environments, we allow the developers to use the CF CLI so they can manually push their apps and specify all their configurations in the command line. But as they go up testing levels in non-prod and production, everything has to go through a pipeline. So that's where you store all your app configurations in the manifest.yaml. So that means your application name, how much RAM, disk, route, services, et cetera. And from a supporting capability, Pivotal recommended that Osdon had a CICD, a mature CICD process in place, as well as centralized logging. And when we first deployed Pivotal Platform, we had neither. And so we had the product up and running, and developers started getting onboarded to the platform. And at first, each app team it was responsible for creating their own CICD pipeline. We used Jenkins at AutoZone, so they were writing their own pipelines. And that put more pressure on the CICD team to standardize, standardize what that process looks like. So it was a catalyst for us to have a mature CICD process. And so I think a couple months after Pivotal Platform was deployed, we were able to get a golden pipeline for developers to start using to deploy to Pivotal Platform. In addition, centralized logging was not non-existing. Out of the box, Pivotal Platform provides Apps Manager and PCF Metrics, both of which have their limitations. So the Platform Ops team decided to take on that task of deploying enterprise centralized logging, and we decided to go with Elasticsearch stack, and we named it Matlock. And yeah, we've been able to offer that service for not only uh, Pivotal Platform developers, but also developers from that are running their applications on traditional VMs. And so coming back to growing pains from the Platform Ops team, and I believe this also impacted developers, one of our greatest challenges was how do we onboard users? Well, we had Pivotal Platform deployed initially, and we had maybe 10 to 20 developers at the time, so it was pretty easy to go through the Apps Manager UI, which comes out of the box, and you can click and add users that way. Well, as the user base grew, that became, that was not sustainable anymore. We had typos, and then we had multiple foundations, so you had to go add them to multiple places. So we decided to write onboarding scripts. But that still required 
too much toll on our side because anytime anyone wanted to get onboarded, we had to stop what we were doing and spend 20 to 30 minutes onboarding that user. And so then we decided to use Pivotal's recommendation of the, using the CF management tool, which had a, a, a learning curve. And to try to ease that learning curve, we decided to go, we decided to write documentation for it. And that ended up turning into almost a book because it had a bunch of different commands that developers had to go through and we had to write one for how do you install CF management on a Windows machine, how do you install one on a Mac, how do you install one on Linux. So anytime a user wanted to request access to the platform, they sent us an email, we tell them, hey, go read a book on CF management, and they kind of skim through it and execute the wrong set of commands or have a typo, and they'd submit a merge request, and then the, an error would occur, and we tell them, go back, and yeah, as you can see, it, it's a very frustrating experience for a developer to get onboarded to the platform. And because we're supposed to be this new platform that's supposed to enable developers and have provide a less frustrating experience, we decided that this process cannot be. So we just met up one weekend um, and had like an internal hackathon. And out of that came the self-service onboarding automation tool. So what we wanted out of this was a user-friendly UI where configurations are stored in GitLab and we have manual and auto approval pro process. And by the manual and auto approval process. So if a new application gets onboarded, we probably won't have manual pro approval process to see if that application is valid. However, if a teammate is just adding one of his teammates to the platform, we probably don't want to spend too much attention on that, and so we just have it auto automatically approved. So how we went about creating this tool is we wrote our front end in React, our back end services in Python, and it's essentially using the CF management tool. So whenever a user submits their request for our UI, it executes the necessary CF management CLI commands, which in turn creates a merge request and it either gets manually or auto approved. Afterwards, the concourse pipeline kicks off and our automated jobs add the necessary configurations to all the different foundations. So this is what our self-service onboarding UI looks like. We decided to put all the different functionalities in the different tiles. So you can create orgs, you can update existing org users here. You can view and create custom services, so the user provided services that I mentioned earlier. And we added some of these functionalities because our developers only have auditor access in the higher non-prod environments in production. And as an auditor, you can't view what services you have so that was a pain point for developers, and we decided to alleviate some of that and adding those functionalities in the self-service onboarding UI. You can create ASGs, which are the application security groups. Um, this, those are the egress policies. By default, the platform blocks all egress traffic. And then the dev playground is a space we created for developers that are new to Pivotal Platform to just create requests and just deploy a sample app and get familiar with the platform. So some of the benefits of the self-service onboarding UI are that we had a hackathon a couple months ago and rather than us saying, hey, if you want access to the platform, email us and one of us will manually add you, we just duplicate one of these tiles and said create request access to hackathon space. And so any user that wanted access to Pivotal Platform to launch their hackathon app we just come to the UI and request access that way and within a couple minutes have access. And another benefit is we have multiple Pivotal platform foundations. So keeping those in sync, we would have to implement some complicated or complex orchestration system. And rather than doing that, we decided to use a self-service onboarding UI. So anytime a user submits a request, it applies it to not only our Memphis foundation, but also all our different foundations. And so it helps us keep things in sync. And if you'd like a demo of what our self-service onboarding UI process looks like, I believe Abhi and Shri will be giving those out or going through some of the demos. And so to sum this up, we are able to overcome our growing pains with infrastructure, security, architect, and enabling developers through the self-service onboarding UI through the 
product management methodologies that Pivotal guided us through the Cloud Dojo. And Daniel Church will now come up and discuss some more on that. Thank you. Thank you, Alex. So I'm Daniel Church, and I'm the product manager for Platform Ops and Customer Satisfaction at AutoZone. And I began my career as a Linux, Unix, sysadmin for a Fortune 10 IT company. And I was specifically on the provisioning team. And we had, we were managing a 10,000 plus server environment and my team was responsible for getting all of the new servers out configured correctly so that applications could be deployed so that um, the business could get the capabilities that it needed. And we never could move fast enough. And um, there was, we created all kinds of automation and uh, all the way from firmware to cluster provisioning. And even with all of that, there were still so many errors because it's not always the systems admins that make mistakes. But the people requesting the servers often make mistakes too. So they come back and say, it doesn't work. And it's because they didn't request it correctly in the first place. So there's just so much, there's so many opportunities for manual errors in traditional infrastructure that it makes it excruciatingly painful to deal with. Um, so fast forward a little bit, I became a technical project manager. And now I was the person who was requesting the servers. And I got to see it from the other side because I was constantly trying to bribe the sysadmins to get the stuff done. And I was constantly, you know, going and I would, I would specifically walk up to them and be like, well, just run these commands for me, please, because I don't have root access. You know, and it, it was just very difficult. And then there were the times when I got what, exactly what I asked for and it didn't work because I asked for the wrong thing. So, you know, I... I've always um, tried to offer the best customer service possible in all of the positions that I've held. And in these two roles, my hands were pretty much tied behind my back. And so when I got the opportunity to become the product manager for Pivotal Platform at AutoZone, which we call the AutoZone Software Acceleration Platform, I jumped at that opportunity. Um, my leadership was not completely sold on having a product manager. They, you know, I had previously worked on um, virtual desktop infrastructure and our API gateway as a project manager. And those, once they were done, they got handed over to someone else and there's no project management related to it anymore. Um, and that's what AutoZone was planning to do with Pivotal Platform. And as Kevin said, we decided, you know what, let's do what Pivotal said to do. Um, and so I got trained uh, during our dojo by a Pivotal product manager on how that is different than project management um, and specifically like how I needed to operate in this new role. One of the first things we did is we came up with a vision statement and after we came up with our amazing name, uh, thanks to Kevin, we've got ASAP um, and everybody loves ASAP at AutoZone because we provide a highly available self-service accelerated and secure platform for them to um, deliver their business capabilities. So AutoZone has a list of values and I'm here to say that these are actually what makes the platform team successful just as much as Pivotal Platform does. We did not sit down during our dojo and say, let's look at our company values and see how we need to operate as a team. We didn't do that. But in looking back, this is exactly how we operate. Um, and it kind of goes hand in hand with what Pivotal teaches us. Um, so an auto zoner always puts customers first. So that means when you go look at our backlog today, it's not full of chores on how to make our jobs easier. It's full of, there, are, there is stuff like that in there, but also it's full of features to make developers, architects, InfoSec, whoever our customer base is, make their lives easier. Um, and, and I always drag those to the top of the list because I want to get value to the customers. And why do I want to get value to the customers? Because we care about people. We care about people actually enjoying their job. We want them to enjoy working with us. And you know, the, the, the things that we deliver on a daily basis literally make people's lives better. Um, and AutoZone is planning on running all of their new capabilities on ASAP. Um, so we have to have exceptional performance across our team and ensure that our platform 
is always running and that it's providing exactly what AutoZone needs. We also take a lot of time to energize other people. That means we, we host lunch and learns, we give out cookies, we have pizza parties and things of that nature to get people excited about what we're doing at AutoZone and get ex people excited about new technologies that we're working on on a daily basis. And we also like to embrace diversity. So when Pivotal first brought up the idea of an empathy session, we all kind of, I think we all kind of giggled about that. Like it sounds kind of out there, but I started doing it just like, let's see what this looks like. So when it came to what kind of permissions are the developers going to have um, on the platform, instead of just saying InfoSec, what do you want? OK, we're going to do that. Then it's like, let's bring InfoSec, architecture, app dev, and us all with different backgrounds into a room and have a discussion so that all the concerns can be held and that we can make the best decision for AutoZone. And that works really well. Um, we've, we've done that for other issues, and we will continue to do that. And our number one job really is to help other teams succeed. If, our, if the devs out there aren't successful in deploying their, their, their code to ASAP, then there's no reason to even have ASAP. So we have to help the other team succeed. And I will say that uh, the Platform Ops team is a very disruptive team at AutoZone. Not everyone loves us every day, but generally everyone loves us for the most part. So, we do things differently than a lot of the other teams, and we're constantly trying to figure out ways to cut out manual ticketing processes, move faster, but making sure that we're not doing at the expense of security and other things. So we're constantly pushing the envelope, and, and some people that have been around for a very long time aren't super comfortable with that. So. How are we doing? We, we, sent on a pro I, we had a product feedback survey two weeks ago. That the results came in, and we had an 84 net promoter score, which is world class if you don't know anything about NPS. And people literally love us, um, which I thought that was awesome. Um, so we do our best to make sure that the developers and everyone that has to interact with us has a pleasant experience but not at the expense of making sure that we're moving in the right direction. So I think people realize that. Uh, we actually went from like a 68 to an 84 over the last three months after implementing a lot of that self-service capabilities that Alex showed you a minute ago. Because the, the toily process of getting things done on the platform wasn't really cutting it. So we listened to that feedback on a survey and face-to-face -face when we gathered that information from different people, and we actually did something about it. And it's really cool to be in a position where we can actually do something about all this kind of stuff uh, without management forcing their agenda on us as far as like we are an autonomous team within AutoZone that is able to provide these kind of capabilities the way that we see fit while we run things by the rest of AutoZone. And that's a kind of a revolutionary way of doing IT for a company like us. So as far as metrics go, Kevin spoke about how we just couldn't move fast enough, and this commercial acceleration program was going to crush us. And so they, they, I think they, their first uh, big milestone they had to do completely without um, Pivotal Platform, and we had it up and running just in time for their second big milestone. And we saw that there was a 99, over a 99% decrease in provisioning time thanks to ASAP. Not only that, but after interviewing the developers and architects and project managers, product owners, we were, we were able to determine that de devs were saving an average of 10 hours per feature because they weren't having to do the undifferentiating heavy lifting that goes along with traditional infrastructure. So one thing that Alex spoke about earlier is when we set this thing up originally, we had all kinds of conversations with architecture, with InfoSec, and with developers and all these people, and we kind of set the standards going forward so that developers don't have to have that new project spinning up, don't have to have those conversations over and over and over again. And that's one of the reasons why we brought Pivotal Platform in the first place is because it's opinionated. And that really helps a company like AutoZone because historically, when it comes to IT, we haven't always known exactly what the best decision is. We need help. Um, on a stability perspective, We've got over four nines, which 
that's really good. Um, and we're really proud of that number because that's one of the reasons why we got this. That was one of the reasons we were able to sell this to uh, our executive leadership is maybe we've had some outages in the past and some of our legacy systems haven't done as well as they uh, should. So we were able to say, hey, look, this is going to help with that. And this number right here shows you that absolutely 100% has helped with that. On a security perspective, we're staying ahead of where InfoSec wants us to be at, and they don't even have to bug us. We even send them a report on a daily basis showing, us, showing them like where our products are at, our patch levels, and all that kind of stuff. And they didn't even ask for that. We just said, you know what? We're just going to give this to you. You just come and ask us if you have any questions. And that's the kind of customer service we like to give to other teams. On a scalability perspective, we have well over 100 developers, all serviced by four operators plus myself. And we're not just running ASAP now. ASAP is our number one priority. But as Alex brought up, we also have a product called Matlock, which is our enterprise centralized logging, which is a pretty big deal at all his own right now. And we also have our self-service portal, which I don't know, you may not have noticed, but there was a tab at the top that said InfoSec on there. InfoSec has started sending their firewall requests and API gateway policy migration requests through our self-service portal so that people don't have to use Word documents to request things to be done anymore, which that's the kind of stuff we like to help other people at AutoZone with. So we, the, that's why we are able to provide so much to AutoZone is because we've spent so much time on self-service and automation so that a small team can provide a large impact across AutoZone. So we don't just work hard or work smart, but we also like to play hard too. So we consistently like to invite people from other areas of AutoZone to come and have fun with us. And when we were in the dojo, we came up with this funny idea that everything we do is ops because we're the platform ops team. So we've done everything from go-kart ops. My favorite's boat ops because, I mean, who doesn't have fun on a boat? Um, but every Friday we go to lunch ops. And Memphis has some amazing food if you've never been there. So there's never, um, you never run out of places to go check out. And Kevin Ponds, our fearless leader over here, is, is renowned at AutoZone for being the best person at picking where to go to lunch. The first application to go live on ASAP was actually called the Lunch Picker app. And it was a Python application that would, it had a certain list of um, restaurants that it would cycle through. And when you'd go there, then it would tell you where you should go to lunch that day. So that way you don't have to make that decision. Um, another, another big hit at AutoZone is swag. So no other team at AutoZone goes that gives out stuff. You know? So we, we've got coffee cups, we've got shirts, and we've got stickers. And on a weekly basis, someone comes up to our area, which we call ASAP land, which is our <laughs> area of cubicles. And so it says, hey, how do I get one of those shirts? Can I have a sticker? Can I have a coffee mug? And some of them don't even, like, they don't even know what cloud computing is. They don't know any, like, they, they, they just saw it and thought it was cool and wanted it. Our CEO ran into someone in the elevator the other day and was like, what is that thing on your shirt? And, she, and uh, Aaron, who was asked that question, was able to tell what amazing things are going on downstairs in the basement where IT is about the AutoZone software acceleration platform. So if you're interested in AutoZone, just email pivotal at autozone.com. You're guaranteed a response. Um, we're hiring over 100 people over the next year because we're really heavily investing in IT. And so we would love to hear from you. And also, instead of doing a formalized Q&A, we have five of us, and I think we've got maybe four laptops with us, and we would love to show you our self-service portal or have any kind of informal conversation that you'd like to have over in this area when you're done. So thank you, everybody, and have a good rest of the conference.